So we're picking back up as we've been walking through the Old Testament. And we're in a time now for Israel that um, all the kings, you got the two kingdoms, the northern one, which is Israel, the southern one, which is Judah. And so we're just going to, there's so many details I could look at. And I was looking at them and I'm like, you guys would probably get bored looking at every single detail. So I don't want to look at every single detail. If you want to read it, you go ahead and read it. There's lots of stuff in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk us through some of the So I'm going to walk you through just a few for today, and we're going to get somewhere of the kings of who? Can you say this? The kings of so they, where are they located? They're up north. They're in the northern part. And so there's 10 tribes up there. There's two down here in Judah. And so if you remember, there was the guy, the king who set up, he set up idol worship in, 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 is, in Israel, the northern tribes, because he's like, I don't want everyone going down to Jerusalem. I might lose my people. So I, I set up, and he set up the worship of idols, two of them specifically. They're bulls. And he says, he, he says guys, this is God who brought you out of Egypt, which was a lie. And one of the Ten Commandments, God says, don't worship what? Don't make them like, don't, don't make an idol. Don't make something and say, that's me, because that's not me. And so one of the first kings, we're just going to quickly go through this. One of the first kings, see if you can say this guy's name. I, Basha, I think that's your right. And, and what he did is he, he emphasized um, um, having all the people come and worship, and he really publicized, guys, you need to worship these idols. So all Israel, he was like following in the footsteps of that other king. That was King um, 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 Jeroboam, I had to think for a second. And, and he's making all of them worship idols. Now, boys and girls, listen. If you worship an idol, you're actually worshiping a demon. It's not just a thing of stone. It's not even a thing of plastic. It's not a thing where it's, oh, so they'd make them out of gold and silver. If you worship idols, you're worshiping demons. These are powers that aren't God. And sometimes they'll make promises. You can go into shops and you can see people like have elephants and they say, oh, if you worship this one and touch it on the way in, you'll get good luck. Don't do that. If you're a follower of Jesus, we don't worship what? Idols. Now listen, because he was like a king and he kind of enforced it, do you know he made children worship idols? He told children to worship idols, to worship demons. People do it today too. They'll take their kids to a church and they bow down to Mary. They'll take people to church and they'll, even schools will make kids do it. They'll say, oh, you need to meditate. We, if you're a follower of Jesus, you don't worship what? Idols. Don't worship them. Don't worship demons because they can have an effect. They can mess you up. They make you afraid. They can, they can make you think thoughts that you don't want to think. They can really mess things up. And so what this king started doing is he was doing it, but then God, who is faithful, he sends a prophet. He sends a prophet. And this prophet, his name was, let's see if you can pronounce this one, Jehu. 
Jehu, I think that's the way you say it. Jehu. And because this king was provoking God to anger, he was like saying to God, yeah, let's pick a fight, dude. I'll tell all the people to worship these things. What you going to do about it? That's a dangerous thing to do. People still do that today, but it's a very foolish thing to do. And so he sent this prophet in and he said, listen, you're doing this thing. God made you king. God brought you up and now you're leading his people down this bad road. And he says, actually, you're going to die and so are all your children. He said, I'm wiping you off the planet. That's pretty like, whoa, God, that's pretty. But God doesn't mess around when it comes to his children and his family. If somebody tries to lead the people of God down a bad road, God will deal very severely with those individuals. And he shows it with these kings. The next guy came in. Let's see. This guy reigns. He got, actually got about 24 years. So he reigned for quite a while. And then God sent the prophet to tell him, listen, and the guy just didn't repent. He says, like, well, who cares? And sure enough, God brought judgment. The guy who takes over after him, let's see if you can pronounce this guy. Ella. Ella. I, I think that's the way you said it. Allah? I don't know. How do you? How would you say it? He's not around now, so he can't tell us. And he started reigning, and he was this guy's son. And then after a little while, about two years, I think it was, and then, then what happened was is that another guy was like, I, I don't want to listen to this guy. He was the captain of his like chariots. He like covered about half of them. He was a general in the army. And, and this guy... Zimri, he's like, I'm taking this dude out. And when the guy sat on his throne, he's like, yep. He went in and he took him out. And he couldn't be king. And he thought, no, I'm going to be king now. But he was king for about two weeks before he got deposed. He saw that it wasn't going to happen right and the people were coming. So he literally went into the castle all to the king's, the king's palace, and he went inside, and he started the whole thing on fire, and he never left. And God did exactly what he said to, he would do with this king, and he took the family off. Dude, can I say to you, don't worship idols. If you worship idols, you are in direct disobedience to your creator, and your Redeemer. Are we okay? Everyone's really quiet. God's serious about what he does. And this is what happened throughout Israel. God sends his word through the prophet, and he expects that they're going to listen. Now, God is merciful to those that repent, but to those who won't, if we reject the love of God, what's left? The next king, very quickly. This guy's name was... Omri. Now he follows on after Zimri was there for two weeks, and he follows on. Now for him, he's reigning in, in, in Israel, and, and he decides after about, about six years or so that he wants to change the capital of, 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 of Israel. He wants to make it a different city. And so he does this and makes a different city, and the city is called
Samaria. Maybe you've heard of that place. In the New Testament, we find we have uh, Galilee, and we have uh, uh, the where Jerusalem is in Judea, and then this area in the middle, which was called Samaria, was right in the middle. And that's where, that's where he says, I'm going to make the capital Samaria. And, and, and that became really important. This will become important later on. You may not understand it all now, but you will. And he made, he made everyone worship again. And he set up those two idols again in Samaria, in the capital city. What happens in the capital city begins to happen throughout the rest of the nation. And he says, you need to come and worship here. The Bible says he actually began to behave worse than any of the kings before him. Any of the kings that came before, he began to lead his people. And when you lead people down the worship of idols and demons, their behavior becomes really bad. They begin to do all sorts of naughty things and bad things. And, and, and it ruins families. It ruins generations of people. And God's not happy. This is his people. He said, you're mine. I redeemed you. I brought you out of Egypt. And now you're being led down this road. And then Omri's son, you might recognize this guy's name. And this is where we're going to finish today. Because there's a whole bunch that we're going to look at with him. See if you recognize this guy's name. What's his name? Ahab. Ahab. Now this dude is where it really gets bad. His dad was wicked. It's funny how sometimes when the parents are wicked that the kids can become more wicked. But this is what happens. Because there was no repentance. And so it says that actually Ahab took the nation deeper and deeper into sin and idol worship. And they became a place where eventually, you know, they actually gave their babies to gods by killing them. But God is, is so kind and merciful. He doesn't like bringing judgment. So he sends another prophet. See if you know this guy's name. What's his name? Elijah. Elijah. He was known as the prophet of power. He was, going to, he was going to reveal the power of God even from heaven. And God was calling his people, don't go that way. Let all your hearts return to the Lord and he'll have mercy on you. He'll be kind to you. He'll forgive your sin and forgive your iniquities. He'll make you clean again and so that you can rejoice in the one true and living God. You don't have to worship demons. You don't have to worship idols. You can worship the one true and living God. And he sends him. Now there's so much we're going to look at with Elijah. It's absolutely amazing. And his story continues on even to this day. And we'll look at some of those at, at, as we move forward. But see, you know, boys and girls, what happens is, is that those who lead people, those who lead people have a big responsibility. I do. Your parents do. To lead you to follow Jesus above everything else. To follow and listen and worship him above everything else. If they lead you down a bad road, let me tell you, you don't have to go. If they're worshiping demons, if they're worshiping idols, if they're going down, you don't have to go that way. Don't give yourself to it. Tell them, no, I'm not doing it. They might get upset. That's okay. God's on your side. You follow Jesus. If they say, oh, it's okay. Do this little thing here. That's a lie. And you say, no, I'm not doing it. I tell you, the power of God will be present with you to help you. 
And he'll back you up. And if you're backed up by God, he, if he's got your back, so you stand. And I'm telling you, if you've done it already and you have, you have worshipped idols or you've played with tarot cards or you have played with things that you know are wrong with demons, then go. Talk to your mom and dad. Talk to those at Jam. Talk to those at, at Riot. Come and talk to me and Pastor Claire. We'd love to pray with you because you can repent. You can say, Jesus, I'm done with it. You can renounce it. I'm not going that way and I, I refuse to accept what you're saying to me, you wicked thing. I'm not going that way, and I renounce you in Jesus' name. And then there's freedom, because there's a cleansing that Jesus will bring for you. We doing all right? See, some of you parents don't like getting exposed to what you're doing at home. And if you're doing wicked things at home, the Lord will deal with you. Because he's protected. He's protective over, over children. And so you little ones. Put your hope in Jesus. Put your hope in God. Tell him, Jesus, I trust in you. See, the Bible says that when we do stuff like that, you know this one, the Bible calls it what? Sin. sin. That's right. And sin separates us from God. We can't worship demons and then say, God, I trust you. That doesn't work. So we turn from those things and we turn to the Lord Jesus. Jesus, you be my king. You be my Lord. I love you. I trust you. He's the one that rescues you. He's the one that is able. He's the only one that's able. And that's why Jesus had to come. Not only did he come as in, uh, just to like speak to us or teach us, he didn't come just to demonstrate, listen, I have power over these things. He came so that you could be made clean so he could stick his power in you. So you can follow. So you can know his help. So you don't have to go around losing your temper all the time and smacking people. You don't have to be like be in fear of those things in your mind. You can be free from those. Jesus came to take our sin away. He's made the payment entirely. He was buried, he died, and he was buried. And we, people thought, well, that's it, it's over. But that wasn't true because he has all power and all authority. And so he broke the power of death. He dealt with the devil who had the power of death. And Jesus rose in He rose in power, and he works in power for those who will trust him, and he's strong and mighty. Let me just, it's in my heart just to say this, boys and girls, listen real quick here. Some of you play video games on your games. Now, um, I got an Xbox, and I like playing Xbox. I don't do it much anymore now. I'm sorry, it's not a PS5 or whatever you might have, but anyway. So I have, and, and I, used, I used to play, and I love this one game we used to play, and it was called, oh, I don't remember. Anyway, but it, it was like a guy, he'd go around, he had a sword, and he'd beat up dragons and everything. But they said to me in the game that if you want the extra power, you have to bow to this altar. I'm like, well, oh, Lord, it's just pretend. It's not for real. And the Holy, said, why, the Holy Spirit said, why would you pretend to worship another God for power? So I, put, I quit playing the game because I didn't want it in my heart. Some of you might be playing games on your phones, on your iPads, where there's things that you know that's evil, that's wrong. And the Holy Spirit will tell you. The Holy Spirit will make it clear. Can I just advise you, please? You don't have to play that. There's other things out there that you can do. Don't let that stay in your heart because it can have an effect. Even those things. Let me just pray. And if you're a parent, you shouldn't be letting your kids play those things. If you're a follower of Jesus, that should be illegal in your house. So, Father, we just ask your blessing and ask for your help. 
Lord Jesus, thank you that you came to set captives free, that you came so that we could live in power and light and walk with you, knowing your love, knowing your cleansing. Lord, I thank you that even these little ones can know the power of your Holy Spirit living in and through them, so that, Lord, your salvation, Lord, will be, Lord, not just in parents, but in children. Our families shall be saved, Lord. That, Lord, you would work in our families, and that, Lord, you would bring honor and glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus, you're risen from the dead. Thank you that you have all authority in heaven and on earth. And so, Lord, we trust you. We trust you. Our hope is in you. In Jesus' name, amen.